In this video, we will talk about scattering, diffraction, and interference, which unlike reflection and refraction, can only be explained in terms of the wave nature of light. Before we start this video, do you really think that light could possibly behave as wave? And why do some behaviors of light only exhibit this nature? When you look at the sky, you will notice that in the morning until afternoon, the light appears blue, right? We can explain this by first agreeing that the atmosphere is abundant in nitrogen and oxygen particles. These gas particles can scatter higher frequency components of white light. What are these high frequency components? Remember the seven colors of rainbow, right? Arranged as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These color components of light are arranged in increasing frequency and decreasing wavelength. Therefore, the highest frequency among the component colors is violet, while the least is red. Nitrogen and oxygen gases in the atmosphere scatter violet the most, followed by blue, green, and so on. This scattering happens because these gas particles absorb light and scatter it in all directions. This scattering of light, which is our first wave behavior of light, depends on the relative sizes of the particles and the wavelength of light is what we call Rayleigh scattering. But you may ask, if violet, which has the highest frequency and shortest wavelength, is scattered the most, why the sky appears blue instead of violet? This is because our eyes are more sensitive to blue light than violet light. That is why we see the sky blue. Next way behavior of light is what we call diffraction or the spreading of light when it encounters an obstacle or an opening. The most common perhaps is when water waves passing through slits. We see how the waves are bent or deviated around the corner of the slit as they pass through, right? This deviation of waves or diffraction happens to all waves such as light and also water and sound and others. When they pass relatively small slits or pass by the corners of the object, they differ, however, in the degrees of being. Usually, the degree of diffraction depends on the wavelength of the wave and the size of the opening or object. In general, we can establish that the longer the wavelength compared to the width of the opening or object, the greater the diffraction. This makes the diffraction of light not visible in the slits. Usually, ordinary objects or slits have dimensions of centimeters to meters, while light's wavelength is about 10 raised to negative 16 meter, or that is about 1 over 1 million of a meter. Some light diffractions do occur at corners, but it goes largely unnoticed because it is difficult to see. If we inspect an object, say this razor blade here, using a special lighting very closely, we see that the shadow boundary is blurred or fuzzy, and there is actually a pattern of bright and dark regions. This is an indication that some diffraction of light has occurred. The last evidence of wave-like properties of light is what we call interference. By definition, we can say it is a combination of two or more waves into one wave whenever they pass through the same point, forming a resultant waveform. This waveform is given by the principle of superposition. There are two types of interference that we will discuss here. First, the destructive interference which happens when the opposite parts of two waves meet. For example, the crest, the highest part of a wave, meets the trough or the lowest part of another wave. 
this type of interference result in the cancellation of these two waves and it will appear as a straight line. On the other hand, when two identical parts of two waves meet, say crest to crest or throw to throw, constructive interference happens. This results in a new wave with the same wavelength but twice the amplitude. Here are some examples of light exhibiting this behavior. We have two wave pauses here of equal magnitude. They meet and they overlap, exhibiting a total construct constructive interference. At the instant of overlap, we see that the amplitude or the maximum displacement from rest position becomes twice that of individual ones. Then, when two wave pulses of equal magnitude are out of phase, the waveform disappears for an instant when waves exactly overlap and their combined amplitude of the waveform is zero. This is a total destructive interference. But the word destructive is quite misleading. Do not get the idea that the energy of the pulses is destroyed. Well, the waveform is destroyed but the energy is still there in the medium, only conserved as a potential energy. After interference, the individual wave pulses continue on with their original waveforms. All of us probably seen some colorful display in oil films or soap bubbles. This display of colors can be explained by interference. When light strikes the oil surface or the surface of the bubble and the reflected rays from the top and bottom surfaces of the oil are in phase, meaning their crests combine or throw combine, a constructive interference occur, and we will see a color of light for a certain angle and film thickness. When the reflected rays are out of phase, destructive interference occurs, and this area appears dark. Because the thickness of this oil film varies, a colorful display is seen for different wavelengths of light. To sum up this video, we knew that there are three behaviors of light that suggest its wave-like property. We have a scattering, which occurs when particles, such as those in atmosphere, absorb light and scatter them in all directions. Then, we have diffraction, or the spreading of light when it encounters an obstacle or an opening, and interference, which is the combination of two or more waves into one wave whenever they pass through the same point. Reflection, refraction, scattering, diffraction, and interference suggests a dual nature of light, as particle and as wave, which we will discuss in the next video. Once again, this is Gilmar Di Castro and see you in the next video.